Handanovic lifts aloft the Serie A trophy. Inter are champions for the 2020-2021 campaign. The Cultural Guys is a weekly podcast by Adriano Donardo, Gianni Delacoli, and myself, Nicholas Di Giovanni. We want to bring Cultural back to its roots in our communities and share stories from around the world about why we're passionate about the beautiful game. You can listen to us anywhere where you listen to your podcasts, including Spreaker, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Mixcloud. Give us your opinion on social media at the Cultural Guys on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The intro song is Fireworks by Jazz. What a crazy, crazy day in the city, huh? and we didn't even have any games. Just finished. Mm. Just finished the season on on Sunday. Monday, Tuesday. Happy Wednesday. days. That's three Thursday, days. Friday, happy days. <laughs> and everybody gets fired. Nobody's fired here on the couch, guys. Adriano Donardo, Gianni Dalcoli, I'm Nicholas Di Giovanni. How are you guys doing? The champion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Except, except for today's uh, news, uh, I'm good. I'm feeling good. Johnny, I don't know, and uh, Nick is all smiles, so uh, it should be an interesting episode. I'm just gonna, just gonna, just get the get the news going. Hold on, just gonna, just gonna, just hang myself here on my mouth. And I'm just kidding. Oh shit! <laughs> you, you need, you, Johnny, you're gonna need to wear two masks: one over your mouth and one over your eyes to hide that you're a Napoli fan. <laughs> just, 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 just cover everything with the shame. <laughs> Uh, man, I was so looking forward to to talking about uh, you know the match eight thirty eight, the the craziness that happened, the race for the Champions League. I mean, we still are going to talk yeah. about that, but there's other news to yeah. talk about. Antonio Conte, for me, this is, this is the big news out of the day. Antonio Conte yeah. fired or let go, mutually parted ways, on, whatever you mutually call parted it. ways, yeah, mutually parted ways, whatever you want to call it. You know what's funny? This is the third straight coach to win a Scudetto and then get fired. Oh. Allegri in 2019, Sadi in 2020, Conte in 2021. I, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking like what I was going to say about this, right? Like for me, it makes no sense. Apparently, you know, there's difference of opinion between Conte and, and, and Zhang and inter, you know, ownership. And, you know, they didn't want to spend money. He wanted to spend money. He wanted to get more players. They said no. He said, okay, I'm going to leave. That's apparently what the gist of it was. If if I'm into in ownership, I give this guy what he wants. This is this is just ridiculous. If I'm an Inter fan, I'm, I'm pissed off. Because you win your first trophy in 10 years after how many coaches, how many different eras, how many different management... You finally win that first Scudetto. You have a club that looks good. And, you know, your coach wants to build upon to get going in Champions League. And you're just, it's almost as if they're going to tear it all down. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but it's its a crazy, crazy thing to do. And I know Juve, Juve was, you know, they fired their coaches two times in a row after winning a Scudetto. Very different situations for Inter. Just, this, yeah. this doesn't make sense. Uh, like... It depends because I understand that he's wanting the Scudetto. I get the fact that, you know, like he's bringing the – he brought the team back to winning ways. And you obviously want to pay the coach that did that because why would you not want to keep a winning coach? But given what the financial situation is at Inter, you know, they're, they, they sold recently – recently they sold some part ownership to get some money in where there's like now there's a loan issue, situation where they have a certain amount of years to reap. To, to, to repay the loan that they received from I forget the name of the company I apologize to the listeners but um, in, in a team in a desperate financial situation if you need to cut costs because of what the reality is you have to cut costs and if Conte is one of the biggest expenses on your wage bills or uh, one of the easier expenses to get rid of you know like you're gonna have to do it like as much it's and I the way I see this is not because 
Conte had a, a falling out with the Inter ownership. I think it was more if if that was the case, I think it would have been out earlier than than later. I think personally, it's just it might like I feel well, I feel personally that it has to do with the financial situation at Inter. I I I I'm, I feel it's mostly about that and not about Conte having a conflict with management. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like we see the reports, you know, all over Twitter and all over social media. You know, Inter has to. Has to cut costs, like Johnny's saying. Uh, rumors, uh, eighty million. Uh, they have to, you know, they have to sell some players, maybe, uh, just to get uh, back and balancing the books. You know, obviously, it's been a tough year for everybody. And um, yeah, no, I, I find this this news is just it's crazy to me. But at the same time, when you speak about content, you speak about um, falling out or just um, just not going the right way. I, I also wasn't like totally like I kind of it kind of was maybe expected, but. Not maybe not expected is the right word. It just um, it didn't. It caught me off guard, but at the same time, it didn't because uh, we all know Conte's history. Um, you know, it doesn't get his way. Uh, you know, kind of a bit of a pose a tantrum, bit of a crybaby, and uh, and just was like, okay, well, I'll just leave, and I'll just I'll just bounce off to to another club and and whatnot, and you know, never never start a project but never finish it, and um, it's unfortunate. Uh, at the same time. I understand where I guess the Inter is coming from. You know, they do have to cut costs. Uh, Conte, like like Johnny said, did bring glory, and like Nicola said, they bring glory to to Inter. Uh, but at the same time, it's at what cost? You know, uh, the, these uh, he's been getting paid twelve million dollars. They were thinking he was he. I think I even heard that he wanted more, um, and uh, and obviously Inter were weren't willing to to give him that. Uh, and at the same time, it's you know. How much more players do they need to bring in? Like Conte built a good team. They, you know, they had spent the money that he wanted. Now he leaves, and now they're stuck with "quote unquote" Conte's team. Like, what happens to, uh, you know, Lukaku? What happens to Eriksson, uh, Barella, Hakimi, Lautaro? Like these players, they're not cheap players, and you know their salaries are only going to go up if they do stay. So, I think it's a bit of a. Um, obviously, it was a shock news. Um, the little part inside of me doesn't think it was. Um, maybe uh, you know totally uh, out of the blue because you know Conte has that track history, but um, I just think it's it's a tough situation for uh, for Inter as a club. Uh, I don't know if this is on Sunin, I don't know if this is on Zhang, I don't know who it's on, like who you want to put the quote unquote blame on. Um, but I think obviously Conte has to take some of this blame as well because how many more times are you going to pull these stunts of of starting a project, getting what you quote unquote want. Uh, Win, and then have a falling out or whatever you want to label it as, and then and then bounce. Like there's only so many times where that can that can be done. I I would think. And how many more clubs are going to take you as a as a manager seriously? He's a fantastic coach uh, when everything goes to plan, but when things kind of shift, I feel he doesn't ad- ad- adapt properly. Uh, has a bit of a sore uh, mentality, and uh, and it shows. And uh, it's unfortunate for Inter because. Like Nick said, ten years they came out of that, you know, maybe banter era, one, and now this puts a big damper on next season. Like, what's Inter next season? Like, we have no idea, right? So, um, it's it's a strange, but uh, definitely something that I guess took a lot of people by shock. Uh, quickly, one answer, one answer question before we move on to another team uh, who fired a coach. I'm going to ask two questions here. Uh, first comes from social media. Both Mass, Richo, and Footy Culture asked, who's going to be inter-, inter coach? And I'm throwing something in. Where's Antonio Conte going? One word answer to both of those questions. Uh, for who's going to be Inter's next coach? Wow. I think it's going to be tough. Uh, I'm going to go maybe off the board. I'll probably say um, uh, Maurizio Sari. I think uh, Sadi Ball uh, at Inter. Um, I think he. I don't know if he needs maybe a couple more players in the midfield. Uh, I think the midfield is 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 pretty good as it stands now. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I think I think because I don't think Allegri's going. I, I don't see Allegri going. Um, you know, I, I I don't think so. But it's I don't know. It's gonna be tough. I, I'm gonna throw an odd ball out, a curve ball. I'll say Sadi. That's a long word, Adriano. <laughs> I know. Um, but where's Conte going? Where's Conte going next? Next, home. He's not going anywhere. 
he's not going. He's not. He's not going to Madrid. Madrid. I don't. I don't no. think so. And uh, he's going to stay home for a bit. I, I yeah. don't. I don't know really. I'm going to say at, at home because uh, I don't see any big club uh, taking him right now. Johnny, um, I don't know what the whole, like. I think Inter might go for somebody cheaper, not as much of a proven winner, but is able to make a team better. Um, if if the rumors are true that he's available, I'd say probably Walter Mazzari. I I don't think uh, the Lazio thing is going to happen. Uh, no, it's not. What, especially yeah, what Inzaghi. Inzaghi t- I said in seeing it. Inzaghi said today. Um, you know, so uh, I Walter Mazzari, and it might be somebody cheaper than Sadi. So because like, you know he's not really that much of like Sadi at least won an international trophy. So. Um, that that's my uh, guess. Uh, and uh, for me, if Inter really wants to save on money, Claudio Ranieri just left Sampdoria, which is completely mm. off the board. I doubt it's even going to happen, but knowing Inter, if they're really passionate about saving money, they're going to bring in Ranieri. Uh, <laughs> and it's going to be funny. And Conte, yeah, I think he's going to take a year off. Um, Napoli. Here's Farione, who's got oh, him behind and equalised for Verona. <laughs> oh. Davide Farione, breakaway goal for Verona and Napoli's lead lasting just eight and a half minutes. You heard there the goal that sunk Napoli, uh, that lifted Juventus into the Champions League. Davide Farione, Juventus legend. His son is a massive Ronaldo fan. If you look at his wife's Instagram, she has pictures of, uh, you know, Ronaldo and, and his son had a Ronaldo-themed birthday a couple of years ago. Um, the first time Juve and Verona played against each other. Uh, you know, she posted a picture with, of Faraoni with uh, with Ronaldo. Uh, Ronaldo met his son afterwards. Basically, Faraoni, he knew what he was doing. He helped Juventus. You know, we, we love him. Maybe they should sign him in the summer. Brings Juventus into the Champions League. Knocks Napoli out. Uh and then right after the game, I hope I hope De Laurentiis already spoke to Gattuso about this because he basically announced uh, Gattu- Gattuso's firing on on Twitter. I'm sure he spoke to him already. It would be really embarrassing if he didn't, but I'm sure he did. Uh, and and then in the days following, uh, manager Saga, what is it? First Conte Sao from uh, from Porto. I, I'm sure ADL only wants him because he beat Juventus. Uh, now it's at Spalletti. Gattuso ended up going to Fiorentina, which I love. Um, Gianni, yeah. give us your thoughts on that game and give us your thoughts on, on who's going to be the next manager. Um, I, I guess I can consider myself lucky that I had to work that Sunday and not be able to witness the game alive. But following what I saw on Twitter, looking at the extended highlights and everything, analyzing, trying to find... It's been what I said since since many, many times before on previous episodes. Napoli, they're what's great about them is that the players have a chemistry. They all love each other. They're all very happy together. All buddy buddy. But what also costs them? Remember, uh, actually, just a throwback. Remember, I said what was perfect about Ibrahimovic signing with Milan was that he's a serious pre- like like when he's he's not afraid to insult you or tell you, hey, we need to get this done type of thing and like like throw you in the mud just to get you to be better. Napoli yeah. doesn't have a player like that. Napoli, it, like, I, I think I've also said it when we had uh, the two Rafas uh, on our on our, on our podcast, uh, on our one episode where what I love about Insigne is that, you know, he's the homeboy. He's the, the, the hometown kid. You know, he has the passion for the team. You know, like for him, it's not just a jersey. It's a way of life. But he's not the type of leader that's going to be like, hey, what are you doing? Wake the fuck up type of thing. Sorry for swearing, but that's that's the no. type. And I think Napoli lost that when Hamsik left. Um, I feel like as if Hamsik was the type of guy that was very well respected in the dressing room. Now, I'm not saying the reason why Napoli didn't win is because Hamsik wasn't there. What I'm trying to say is that there were many games in the season that Napoli could have easily won and they lost because I, you, you saw it in the team that – they didn't. They didn't have that hunger. They weren't. They weren't like killers when they needed to be killers. Um, and uh, the third off best offensive team in the league should not just. I know Hellas Verona has a notoriety of having an, a, gr- a great defensive system, and you know, and like there's been many great 
I don't want to say great center backs, but there's been good center backs and stuff that have come out of Verona that have tra- that that have been transferred to different teams that do well. Um, I get that, but to 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 know that this is a Champions League qualifying game, everything is on the entire season. All 37 games that you played before led you to this. This is the 38th game that you need yeah. to win to get the Champions, or else if you don't win, everything. You- you've done before has has not been worth it and you only show up with one goal with that with that performance like i understand there been there was many attempts but like very like i think like maybe four or five shots were actually on target you know like um your your big players your big offensive players don't show up when they when you need them to show up and uh it, it it's it was very disappointing and i believe that they're they're the issue is that there's not like the, the culture in the dressing room? It's very nice and pleasant. There's nothing wrong with that. It's very fine to have that in the dressing room. But there's also a severe lack of a proper uh, leader, where the guy who's gonna tell you that, call you out on your crap. He's gonna tell you how to be better, and he's gonna be like, "Look, I'll reward you when you play well, but I'm also gonna tell you to pick up to 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 clean up your act when you're doing terribly." Like, he sighed, for example, thank the fucking Lord that he's gone. Like, that goal, it was all <laughs> on him. That goal was all on him. Uh, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I've seen better defending on the uh, uh, on at St. Michel House League games. You want to know why Michel, he baby. was that fucking defender on the left? <laughs> at St. Michel House League games. St. Michel makes uh, an appearance two episodes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um I'm just so happy he's gone. But like it death taxes Napoli's need on the left. That's 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 been the model for the past what five years, six years uh, that I've been saying. Anyways, long story short, just to summarize everything, we lost that game because we lost that game. Sorry. Like we lost out on Champions League because the key games that we did have terrible results in came from a lack of proper true leadership. And uh, coach yeah. coach who do you want? Coaching, coaching saga right now. I mean, I wouldn't mind Spalletti. You know, like also former coach for Roma. You know, I liked him at Roma. Um, you know, uh, did decently well with Inter. Um, it's it's a weird saga right now. Honestly speaking, I, I feel like as if, I'm not saying that I'm not talking crap about him, but I feel like as if it would still be an improvement over Gattuso, um, no matter who we get. Uh, De, De Laurentiis is smart. As much as we like to make fun of him and say comments and stuff about him, the guy's not going to go get a manager that has less experience than Gattuso. He's going to get a guy that at least has some form of winning something. Like even when they got Benitez back in the day, Benitez, I think he had at least one Europa League title, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I can be somebody can correct me on that and fact check me. I'm just going off the top of my head. But like they're at the point Napoli where. They have the financials to get a better manager. I mean, at one point, like, like you had freaking Ancelotti as your manager. What what does that say? The club is ser- like, the club is serious on getting a true proper manager. So, um, you know, if they get Spalletti, good, sure. If they get Allegri, because but uh, but now it's Zidane leaving. Now it's Zidane leaving. Allegri is going to sign for Real Madrid. So uh, I'd be okay with Spalletti. I even be great. I'll be even be okay with the former Porto coach. Kessie against Gallini to reach the Champions League. It's a goal that will echo, that will resonate all the way from north to south tonight. Adrian, we talked about Napoli. Uh, Johnny had his chance to talk about Napoli. We got to talk about Milan. Uh, I know there's a lot of other stories, but uh, it feels like Milan's Champions League qualification is almost on the back burner. Um, <laughs> they took care of business, which I was surprised with Atalanta. Obviously, two penalties though. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, we'll take it. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, I, I I really thought you know if Juve was going to make Champions League, it was going to be because of the yeah, you know Atalanta either winning or at least tying Milan. I did I really didn't think it was be gonna gonna be because of Napoli, but uh, Milan took care of business. Uh, first time since 2013 they qualify for Champions League. Uh, what's happening in uh, in uh, Milan uh, 
What's happening with the Milan, the red side of Milan? Well, right now, after today, now we're recording on a Wednesday, uh, May 26th, and it seems like in Milano, it's 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 a pure dumpster fire. Conte out. <laughs> we're going to speak about something later. He's gone. Um, but if we're talking about Sunday, which was the best day, uh, yeah, no, Milan uh, took care of business, like you mentioned. Uh, I was optimistic from the get-go. Um, I... I not only did I really want this to happen, I, I, I truly did believe it. Uh, and, every, I mean, there was a lot of doubters. Everybody's all oh, Milan has the toughest and the toughest schedule to end the season. They play Juve, 3 nothing. You know, they play Atalanta last match day, 2 nothing. Right? They ended off the season five games, five clean sheets. Um, you know, it, it speaks volumes to, to, to the, the unity of the club. I think, uh, you know, they really... Uh, played for each other. They fought for each other. The last game against Atalanta, uh, it, it wasn't the greatest of games, but they got the job done. Um, you know, okay, fine, two penalties. I think they were both merited. Uh, and Kessie, uh all the confidence in the world in, in, in Kessi. Uh, he he swapped both of them home. Uh, and Golini, you know, stunned, right? So um, he is, has had one of the better seasons I've ever seen uh, from like a, a Milan midfielder since we're talking about early 10s uh, into the you know 2000s so uh, I think he had 13 goals on the season just an incredible performance uh, on the last match day um, you know just uh, it's just such a great feeling I think a lot of people counted out Milan after you know they uh, you know they dropped form they started off the season hot they didn't end the season uh, perfect uh, but again they got what they put in the work for, uh, and at the end of the day, their objective was uh, achieved. And I know it only happened on the last match day, but this Milan side got second place. Uh, they, they, you know, out in front over Atalanta, you know, beat out on Juventus, Napoli, Lazio, Ro- you know, Roma, if you want to include them. They, they, they battled the odds, and, uh, you know, they came out on top, um, you know, and proved a lot of people wrong. Um, you know, credit to to Pioli. Uh, I think he, uh, you know, he prepared the guys well. Uh, again, the performance on the pitch wasn't uh, the greatest. It was a little bit nerve wracking, I gotta say, because it, it looked like just a back and forth game, but nothing was really producing. And uh, you know, it, it was it was just a weird game. But no matter how the results went, no matter how whatever went, Milan got the job done. Uh, we get back into Champions League, like Nick said, after after seven years, uh, and it's just like a liberation. It just feels so good to to finally know that Milan's going to be back in Champions League. Um, the only thing that I don't like is that this whole celebration is cut short by today's news, uh, and it seems like for everybody, uh, no, no matter where, it seems like it's kind of a uh, kind of a damper on thing. But again. Nobody's bigger than the club. Uh, you know, we, we move on. And, uh, and Milan's back in Champions League after seven years. And honestly, I couldn't be any more happy. And uh, I think not only do does, you know, Pioli get, you know, kudos. Does Ibra get kudos for, for being that presence, like Johnny mentioned, in the locker room, on and off the pitch. Fantastic. Uh, this young core group really came together and really fought hard for what was really missing in the Milan culture for, for so many years. And again, management, a big ups to them as well. In Maldini, we trust. And uh, and we move on uh, from here. Uh, and I'm just, I don't even care what happens next year in terms of, uh, the, you know, their performances in Champions League, just to hear the anthem on Wednesdays and Milan playing uh, and the, the Champions League badge uh, on, on their shirts. Uh, it's going to put a lot of smiles on a lot of Milanese uh, faces. So uh, just, just so happy to, not only prove the daughters wrong, get into second place, get back into Champions League, and uh, and yeah, we just move on. And we will be talking about that uh, that news today, later with our guest uh, Joe Cappuccino. Um, we'll we'll talk about that because uh, we'll talk some UV with him. We'll talk some Azzurri. This news involves both. Um, but Wait, before... hey, this news. Uh, this before... guy thinks he's going to UV. Gicho's not going to do. He is. He is. He'd, he'd rather. Yes. I think. Did, did, did you see? Did you see? He, he already posted a picture with Bernadeschi, and he was wearing a black and white shirt. So, so it's I'm, confirmed. I'm going to start. I'm going to start saying this. Gicho Donnarumma is not going to Juventus. Yes. Juventus A 
have financial things coming out of their fucking ass. They have 47-year-old Buffon still on the roster. Ooh. Chesney, that's making $7 million a year. Oh, God. Where are, you, where are you getting this money? Uh, from Ronaldo's Chesney. gone. Okay, may, may, maybe you'll, maybe you'll, uh, you'll save some. You'll save if some Ronaldo money. leaves, the Ronaldo money literally goes to Donnarumma. No, I, I don't mean, think I mean, Donnarumma, Donnarumma goes to Ronaldo. You, you, could be, you could buy the three to four Donnarumma's with Ronaldo money. Yeah, no, yeah, that's 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 for sure. A thirty-one million uh, wage. Yeah, I just don't think he's gonna use it. You guys are forgetting or, about or, the, the bonus. We'll talk about that later. But... We'll talk about that yeah. later. Um, okay. What we like to do, what we like to do at the end of the season, and I wanted to focus more on this. Uh, this this week was team of the season. Uh, so come up with with top eleven MVP, coach of the year. Before we do that, I want to look at back at our uh, predictions that we did. Um, that we did at the begin beginning of the season, um, Adriano was the only one who 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 got the top four correct, but not in the correct yeah. order. And Jenny was the only one who correctly predicted Inter would win. Uh, we all predicted uh, Spezia to go down. They didn't. Um, what else? What else? Well, a couple of a uh, couple of weird predictions. I had I had Bologna like seventh. I don't know what I was thinking back in September. Uh, I put, I put, I, I said Capo Canoniere, Ronaldo. Glad I got that. Um, Gianni had Immobile as Capo Canoniere and, and Adriano close enough. You had Lukaku. Um, so uh, yeah. you, you put uh, Ozyman as best young. I don't know if he qualifies for that, that, for that trophy. I'm sure he does. And, and if he does, I'm sure he'll win because he definitely deserved that. Uh, one thing I, we, we did, what we did do, is we tried to predict the first coach fired, and we we did a we we did a kind of a good job, not a hundred percent though. Um, if you look back on on coaches fired, or rather, yeah. So <clears throat> first coach fired was Iacchini. We didn't. None of us. None of us said that. Gianni, you said Gianpaolo. Gianni, you said Di Francesco, and I said Rolando Moran. Next coach fired was Moran, followed by Liverani. John Paolo and then Di Francesco. So at least the three of us, the, the coaches, we're in the realm. Close yeah, enough. We're close in the enough. realm. Um, but let's go uh, quickly before we have uh, Joe on. Um, team of the season. I'll start. Uh, so what we do? Eleven. Come up with eleven players. Formation. You know, not that important. You know, just try to come up with the best eleven players. I went for a uh, goalkeeper Handanovic, uh, defense uh, Strignar, uh, Mancini, Quadrado. I mean, Quadrado, Quadrado, fantastic season with the assist. Strignar, I mean, led that Inter Lion, uh, best defense in the city. And Mancini, you know what? I, I found he had a good season. I found he he improved the season. He didn't take as many stupid red cards. He played a lot of minutes, um, and and he was definitely the rock in in that back line when when Sm- Smalling went, was hurt, especially for Roma. Uh, midfield, uh, Milinkovic, Savic, Mal- Malinovsky, DePaul, and Chiesa. Uh, pretty obvious choices here. Um, originally, I put Zelinsky, and then I took him out, and I put Malinovsky. If you if you if you're actually building a team, you're gonna want SMS and Zelinsky together. But uh, since you know we're not, you got to go with Mal- Malinovsky. Led the league in uh, in assist. Obviously, Chiesa, fantastic season for Juve. Same with DePaul, DePaul for Udinese. And then uh, forwards, pretty obvious choices here. Lukaku, Ronaldo, and Insigne. And, and for me, Lukaku MVP. I think all, I think all three of us took Lukaku MVP. I think he's going to win it automatically and with my coach, uh, Antonio Conte. Um, yeah, pretty pretty easy choices, to be honest. You know, especially in the midfield and, and forward defense, not so much. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's team of the season and, uh, and pretty much, uh, yeah, I, I want to know who you guys pick now. Johnny, you want to go? Uh, sure. So, uh, I went more for like, like I went for like a four, one, two, one, two, just cause I was like, let's just have some fun with the formation and stuff. I really wanted to make it a point to have like a center defensive mid and a center attacking mid, um, and uh, so my, my goalie was Handanovic. Uh, the reason why I chose him, 72.4% safe percentage. Uh, 27 wins, which 14 were clean sheets. 
And the guy basically had the best goals against per 90 in the league, 0.92. So he's letting in less than a goal per game. Just think about that for a second. Um on the back line, I, I I put him in his off I put him in an off position, but I put Davide Calabria on the left back slot. Uh, I went for more defensive players in my back line. Fifty tackles, one over 93, 62 blocks. He got two goals and one assist this year. Not the most offensive winger, obviously uh, on um, on the left back. You obviously want your fullbacks to be uh, offensive players, but I, I like the defensive guys. Um, Romero is one of my center backs, 46 tackles, one over 74, 52 blocks, two goals, two assists. Like I know that we credit Atalanta for being a very good offensive team, but defensively this year, they actually, they also were a good complete unit. Uh, um, the other center back that, um, I feel like as if it's, is, is a bit underrated. And honestly, if a team wants to get a good center back for cheap, I think they could take advantage of him from Torino is, uh, Gleason Bremer. 41 tackles, one out of 65, 60 blocks, and as a center back, five goals. It's very rare that you see a center back even scoring in the league. So, you know, I guess you can get some offense from the middle from him. Di Lorenzo on the right back slot, 57 tackles, one out of 85, 65 blocks. And then stats-wise, three goals, six assists. That's pretty good. Uh, very offensive right back. He's he's also capable of, of making some stupid decisions sometimes, but... I feel like in the right back slot, he's probably one of the better ones in the league. Center defensive mid, uh, mid uh, Marcello Brozovic, 88% passing percentage, two goals, six assists. And in terms of even trying to win the ball back, 36 out of 52. Uh, left mid, I put Luis Alberto, one of the best, like, I, one of the best mids in the game. Like, like I, I sent it to their group chat today. Like, the guy's in a 99th percentile for progressive passes and carries meaning that like with he's he's probably while well, J- uh, Jerry said it top 3 in the world to get the ball 10 yards away or less from the, from the penalty box or even inside from from like the the goal so like if you if obviously you want your midfielders to be some of the best passers in the game perfect nine goals two assists um on the right i put federico chiesa you know, I, I was really sad he went to Juve, but honestly speaking, it was the best move he could have made for his career because he plays with quality players and uh, he gets to play in the top flight and he's no longer the most dependent on guy. Nine goals, nine assists, uh, 77.5 passing percentage, and he creates 3.54 scoring chances per game. So when you have Chiesa on the field, you, you're probably going to get a good three to four chances per game to actually score and win the game. Center attacking mid, I really wanted to put Zielinski. I really wanted to, but Malinovsky, in my eyes, deserves the better shot, shot because in the latter half of the season, he was really called upon by Atalanta to be the guy to replace the hole that Papagomas left. Eight goals, 12 assists. Majority of these all came towards the latter half, so imagine if he actually played the entire season with them. Uh, 74.6% passing percentage and 6.04 scoring chances per game. So with him on your center attacking mid, you're going to get good six, seven chances. Uh, and then my top two, just to wrap it up, Cristiano Ronaldo, <laughs> 29 goals. Okay, two assists, who cares? But 29 goals, like, that's crazy. 64.4% on the dribbles. Like, when he has possession, he's probably, he's getting, he's getting it there. And um, 37% shot on target percentage. So one out of three. It's not the worst. It's not the greatest. But uh, most of the time, every three shots he gets, he's scoring. And then finally, the last player, just to wrap it all up, Lukaku. Impossible to not include this guy in your team for a team of the season. 24 goals, 11 assists, uh, 47.2 shot on target percentage. One out of every two shots are going in from him. Uh, And not only that, 55.1% on the dribble. So he's not as good as Ronaldo, but still pretty solid. And uh, finally, 3.56 scoring chances uh, per, uh, per 90 which is still pretty good for a striker. Most of the time, you're scoring them. You're not creating them. But the fact that he can also create them speaks volumes. So uh, that's my team of the season. Coach? Uh, coach is Conte. Coach is Conte. He won, he won and, the league, and he, and he did it like in a strong fashion. Yeah, so for me, um, a bit different. Johnny went very uh, stats-heavy, uh, pinpointing <laughs> this and pinpointing that, and uh, six-point this and seven-point that. 
me guys i'm not going to give you any of that stuff uh i'm just going to bring you what i think uh was the top uh, top 11 i have a huge bench that you can, is definitely interchangeable with any of these players. But does uh, it follow? Does 11, it follow the city of regulations? So I know I don't, sometimes they put limits uh, on benches. I don't know. I don't is know. It, is, is it is it going to be better substituted than Roma versus Verona? Uh, probably. <laughs> I hope so. It, it, that was embarrassing. I'm did so you follow mad. financial fair play? <laughs> not maybe not. I think I, I did uh, uh, the the boost in FIFA there. You know, you can get the boost. Your friend can give it to you. You does know, does Italy you can have like a specific rule about like p- Italian players that you have on your roster or mm-hmm. supposed to have on your yeah. roster? There it's are the rules. I don't know them because <laughs> I know I know for the MLS, if you have a Canadian team, you have to have a specific am- amount of Canadian yeah. players on your roster. But no, no, no. I I think there's a difference. I don't know. But anyways. <laughs> Continue. Um, so for, for my 11, uh, in, in goal, I have uh, Gigi Donnarumma. This might be the last time we say this. Uh, I don't know. But uh, for me this year, uh, I think he tied uh, Handanovic on clean sheets. He saved Milan um, on numerous occasions. He can't deny his talent. He's a fantastic player. Mentally weak, but very, uh, very, you know, just a top goalie. I would say probably top five in the world. Uh, he's, he's just incredible. Uh, my my defense, I have a four a four back. Uh, so a left back, I have Teo Hernandez, which again I think he um, he produced so much for Milan. Still needs to work on his defensive ability. Um, he hasn't got he has gotten better, uh, but not where he needs to be. His offensive uh, you know prowess is just second to none. He's quick. He can put on. He can assist. He can score. I believe he had seven goals on the year. Uh, just a fantastic player coming on the left flank. Uh, my center back uh, duo, I put um, uh, Stefan De Vrij and uh, uh, De Ligt uh, from Juventus. I think uh, De Vrij, I mean, it could have been Bastoni. It could have been Skriniar. I picked De Vrij. I think he's been a rock ever since he got to Inter. Uh, you know, Inter had a great, obviously, season, great defensive season, great offensive season. And um, I think De Vrij was a, was a big, big time player in the back line for, for Inter this season. Uh, I'm gonna put I put the as well uh, to partner up with them. I think the uh has has improved, uh, you know, since he came to Juventus. Uh, it was all it was always gonna be a big jump. Uh, you know, I think he has proved people wrong. He's still nowhere near where I think he can be. He still has a lot of room to improve, but uh, he took on the role of being, uh, you know, in the rotation of the of the number one center back. Uh, or you know, top two center backs with uh, with Juventus, uh, you know, this season. So I think he definitely deserves some credit. Uh, and on the right uh, right back position, I put uh, Hakimi. I think uh, he's been a fantastic player, a player that uh, I wasn't sure how he was going to do uh, coming to Inter, but uh, again, proving a lot of people wrong. Super pacey on the right on the right flank, can put in the ball, can score, can uh, can just you know move the ball very well. Uh, isn't too much of a, of a liability. I don't think he he can make he can you know track forward, track back very well. Uh, just I think an, a, a crucial part in Inter's success, especially down uh, down the line there. So um, he definitely gets uh, the shout to, to round out my defense. Uh, in the mids, I have uh, I have three mids guys. I know there's so many guys you could have included uh, to interchange with with the mids. I have three. Uh, I put Kessi, Barella, and SMS. I think these are three uh, players that have been engines for their team. Uh, you know, you speak about Milan's midfield. Uh, Kessi has been, you know, like the heart uh, and soul of that of that midfield. Obviously, Ben said, you know, Tonali when he was on, um, you know, Mete came in as well. But Kessi was the one guy to really be there when you needed him. Same for me personally. Same thing with Barella. Uh, just an engine, box to box. Um, I believe he has seven assists on the season, uh, two or three goals. Uh, he's just a guy that they can count on, and he's been there for you know being there in the league in Europe and just being uh, a crucial part of the midfield. Uh, and SMS, I think, to round off the midfield is is a guy that has really um, took on a lot this season. Uh, they have been the captain's armband, really commanding the midfield and just being, again, one of the top midfielders in, in Serie A, especially in my eyes. I think he deserves a lot of credit. Uh, Lazio didn't have maybe the campaign they wanted, but if there are certain bright spots, I think SMS 
is definitely one of them. Uh, and to round off my uh, my my forwards, I had uh, well, I had I had the front three uh, like a left wing, right wing, and and striker. But two of them are strikers. But I put on my left hand side uh, Lorenzo Insigne. Uh, I think he really. I know again, Napoli didn't get into Champions League. Johnny spoke about it. Uh, you know, maybe he's not the the, um, the true leader. Maybe that Napoli needs. I like that he has the armband and everything, but uh, his play this season, you cannot count out 19 goals uh, to his name this season. Um, uh, I don't even know. I think seven assists or maybe five assists, whatever the number was. But the 19 goals, I think either, uh, now guys, you can quote, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, either uh, equaled or was better than his all-time uh, scoring in Serie A. Uh, so for me, Insigne really took um, a step, a step uh, ahead uh, I, I do credit Gattuso with that. I think his his relationship with Gattuso was really uh, a strong one. They really got each other, and they really, I think Gattuso really was able to motivate Insigne this season. Unfortunate how things you know went way with uh, my boy Reno, but um, I think Insigne, I think he definitely has to shout him out uh, for for one of these uh, first spot in the in a team of the season. And then my last two attackers, obvious choices. The guy said it out as well. Uh, Ronaldo, couple kind of near this season. Um, you know, I think uh, Juventus would have been a, in a different place if uh, they didn't have Ronaldo this season scoring these types of goals and uh, the amount that he has uh, that he did produce for them. Uh, and the last guy, Romelu Lukaku. It's it's like a no it's like a no brainer. I think uh, I had pegged Lukaku from the get go. Cabo Canonieri. He came in a bit short. You know, five goals short. He had twenty four, I believe, on the season. But he has been like you speak about Inter. Forget Conte, forget Lazzaro, forget Hakimi, but Lukaku is the name that you have to say after you say Inter, uh, you know, champions this season. Uh, double digits in goals and assists. Uh, for me, his, he is also my MVP of the of, of the season. I think that's unanimous on the cultural guys here. I think Serie A, if they're smart, they'll give it to him. They better not be stupid and not give it to him. Uh, and for me, coach, again, uh, after the news today, it was like, oh, well, I don't know how long we're going to be saying this, but uh, I, I gave it to Conte as well, but I do think you can argue Pioli this season as well, uh, yes. just for the simple fact that he proved so many people wrong. He's had the you know the nagging history of coming up just short, not really doing what he's what he's supposed to be doing. Proved a lot of people was wrong, and you know what, guys? Pioli is on fire. Na 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 na. na. Pioli is on fire. Na, 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 na. So yeah, guys, that's uh, that's how I round out uh, my uh, team of the season. My bench goes on for days, but uh, uh, there's many guys I think we can shout out: Berardi, uh, great season; Muriel, Zielinski, Bastoni, uh, Chiesa for me could have could have intertwined uh, intertwined in there as well. Just the way I, I I guess I went with the four three three, and some of these positions it, for me they weren't really. I wasn't able to really stick in some of these guys that I put on my bench uh, for the top 11. So uh, there you have it. That's my top 11 this season. Hopefully, hopefully for, for the summer, we'll be chanting Mancini's on fire. Mancini's on, on fire. fire. Yeah, yeah. I was going to put Fioli as my coach. Too. On fire. The fact the guy held first place for like a year, for like half a season, and the fact that he got Milan to second, you know, like he was, he would have been my second choice for coach of the year. So. Uh, so uh, I agree with you there, Adri. Yeah. C- coming up, we'll have Joe Cappuccino from the Red Card Report podcast. Juventus dugout and live pictures. They're just crowded around a mobile phone. It's like something you'd see at a pub. And you can see from the celebrations that Juventus have made the Champions League for next year. And they finish in the top four in Serie A. Cristiano Ronaldo not needed on the night. And results have gone their way. You heard it there. Juventus qualified for the Champions League on a mobile phone. That's that's all it <laughs> took to qualify the Champions League. They they gathered around someone's phone in the dugout. 2021. <laughs> and um, we have our Juventus guest this week, uh, Joe Cappuccino from the Red Card Report podcast. Joe, how's it going? It's going great, guys. How you guys doing? Pretty good. Pretty Fantastic. Good. Um, before before we get into the nitty gritty about this this Juve team, we'll talk some Azzurri too. Uh, we want to know first: How did you become a Juve fan? 
Oh, man. Okay, so you can rewind all the way back to 1996. I was a little five-year-old boy in Italy at my uncle's house, and we were watching the Champions League final. Um, I just remember, he was a big UEFA fan, and I just remember every single moment of that game so vividly. And I even remember even more the the celebrations afterwards like, because the entire village where my family's from they're pretty much all Juventini so there were like black banners coming out of windows there were fireworks getting lit in the streets and all that stuff it that cemented me for a lifetime of just being a Juventino so that's that's the story that's awesome well, at least you're around to remember that uh what, what part of Italy is your family from they're actually they're from southern Italy so they're about uh an hour and a half away from Rome it's how a uh, very, very small village of like maybe 300, 500 people called oh, Maserati. Wow. Very, very small. Wow. Uh, so. Gotta love it. Sorry. You go. No, it's okay. Because uh, my, my computer lagged, so I guess I probably missed out on something. I apologize. <laughs> um so obviously, you know, becoming a Juve fan it happened because, you know, the Champions League final. So speaking of Champions League, it came at the expense of Napoli fucking tying. But how do you feel <laughs> about that, about all that stress just taken away from your shoulders with that 4-1 victory and Milan winning? Uh, I mean, I and, mean and, and, and Napoli crapping the bed. That had to that had to be the most stressful Sunday that I have had in record memory i i don't know how i i it's, it's, i have no hair i wouldn't if i had hair i would i would certainly have none um, it's just how do i feel about beating napoli i just uh i don't know how we managed to do it i really don't and we i owe every juventino actually owes verona uh like a serious debt some we should all buy Verona jerseys, <laughs> something, and just say thank you to that that beautiful club from the Veneto. Just like thank you so much. Those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. Did you, uh, Joel? Did you like? Obviously, it was a good stress uh, after after finding out of the result. Um, I don't know how, where you had Juventus this season, but like. Was this anywhere near what you thought would happen with uh, Pirlo as a new coach? Uh, obviously, there was a lot of doubts, uh, you know, coming coming out uh, when Juventus hired uh, Pirlo. What's this team going to be like? Is the tenth possible? What about Champions? Like, where did you have this Juventus team? Is where they finished where they deserved? Should they have should have out of Champions League been a wake up call? Like, what do you make of like what happened this season with Juventus? That's an awesome question. Uh, honestly, where so at the beginning of the season, I expected them to go for it, get that 10th Scudetto, because let's be honest, look at the the team we had, I don't think was a horrible team. Like if you look at the players themselves, it's not, yeah. they're not, they're not amazing, sure, but they're not bad. I think a lot of players had subpar seasons. I think it, despite Lou being one of the heroes of the Copa Italia, I think that he had a very underwhelming first season with Juve. Uh, didn't look like the player that won best young player last year. That's that's for sure. Um, but I w- I'll say going into the season, I was expecting the 10th Scudetto. I thought that was kind of the benchmark. Okay. Then we started seeing... We saw glimpses of Pirlo Ball, right? We saw little bits and pieces of what his, the fluidity that he wanted out of out of a team, but there was zero consistency. Uh, I think that that was the the real big thing, and I think that Juve also made going back even a couple of more seasons. We've been focusing so much on trying to win the Champions League and get as far as we can in the Champions League that it's almost become an obsession for us and uh i I think that we we spread everybody really thin like come on we've been playing what four games a week for three four games a week for years now and 
we're still playing with a lot of these same players who have been doing that day in and day out. It's a lot. So going back to Pirlo himself as a coach, I can't really, I can't really say much about him because I had really no expectations of him. Does that make sense? I had no, yeah. no real expectations of what he would do because he's, he's, this is the first this is the first team that he's ever really coaching. So it's just it's bonkers. Did we deserve to be in the top four? Mm, Nick, don't hate me. I don't honestly the way we played some of these games and the way we dropped points in games we should have won probably not. But that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And we left it very, very late to put in some effort for this. So, yeah, that's that's my take on all of that, Adriano. Honestly, like, um, if they would have finished fifth and played in the Europa League, like, obviously would have sucked. Yeah. But I wouldn't have had, you know, a, a huge problem with it. I, before the game, I was saying, you know, if they finish fifth, maybe it kind of gives a chance for a, a rebuild kind of you know wipe the slate clean maybe uh first of all get rid of Ronaldo you know get his 30 million dollars off the books now you're going to the Champions League not a bad thing obviously not a bad thing always a good thing to go into Champions League but you want to go into Champions League you want to win and and Ronaldo made a post the other day that he's won all the domestic titles in Spain Italy and England He's won Champions League in England. He's won Champions League in Spain. He still hasn't gotten that Champions League with Juventus. Probably won't get Nowhere it. Nowhere close. Probably <laughs> won't get it. His time was in 2019. Um, but, you know, deep down, he still wants to chase that. But does the club still want him? What What, what do you think Juve is going to do with Ronaldo this summer? So, there's a... I've been thinking about this a lot, actually, and I've been reading a lot of different reports from di- from both reliable sources and unreliable sources. Okay? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you got to read the garbage in order to get you know a better picture of exactly what's going on. So the just even going back to his Instagram post, it seems a lot like he's saying goodbye. That's just the tone that I'm reading. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but that's definitely how it comes off to me. Apparently, there are also reports saying that he's moved all of his cars from his place in Turin to Portugal. Apparently, this happens every summer, but why are we hearing about it now? Like, why They want it? you to hear it. Because they want you to hear it, right? Mm-hmm. So... All of this kind of just builds more and more for the case that I think that his time at Juve is done. And uh, I got to agree with you, Nick. I think that we need to get him off the books in order to free up some money so we can get a a friggin' midfield, you know? Just, <laughs> like, it, it's it's atrocious. But, um, yeah, that's my take on, on Ronaldo. I think that I think that he's, he's done. I think he was done when he was benched for the last game of the season. Yeah. 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 And you know, it's it's one thing I just want to add upon. I I agree with you. I feel like as if the Ronaldo contract just really put a stranglehold on Juventus's final financial situation. And that really crippled them more in the long run than it did help them. And a question that comes from Calcio fan blogs from our friend, Joseph, that kind of relates to this. So let's say for example, Let's say, for example, you guys do happen to move the Ronaldo contract off the books of some of some way or another. Realistically, who do you think Juventus will sign this summer? Oh man, who do I want them to sign, or, or who you realistic think they would go after? Realistic, 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 realistic. Okay, Lionel Messi. Uh, can we... <laughs> yeah, because if we go Mbappe. down that route. <laughs> We go down that route, Pogba, you know, the Dan coach. Uh, we're going to go in circles, Joe. After no, 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 the, Pogba, Pogba had his, for me. Pogba had his time. I don't. Want, he can he can stay in Manchester United for as long as he wants. Um, okay, realistic, so realistic, realistic. I would love Locatelli to come. I think that that is also a realistic target. We need to really bulk up that midfield. Also, 
I, I know you guys have definitely seen me shit talk Quadrado on Twitter all the time mm-hmm. because we need fullbacks. The man's not a real fullback, so we we need fullbacks too. Who we could get also depends on who's available. I'm not 100% sure on who would be available for a good price. Um, but going back to the midfield, we would also need someone like Rodrigo DePaul. Um, he, I feel like, could also be a realistic target, even though he seems to be a hot commodity. The Premier League yeah. is knocking, knocking on the door for him. Um, there's just there's so many so many names that I can think of, but it also all depends on who we get as a sporting director as well. Because I, I, I hope I'm not stealing anyone's thunder, but Paratici left this afternoon or this morning. Yep. Yeah. We forgot to mention that. It's true. So with him, there goes the kid. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Paratici could get his man, but he could never build a team. That was the biggest problem with having him. He could get a, a guy like DeLick to sign a contract, but he could never successfully build a, a good team from that. So I think a lot of it depends on who we get as a sporting director. But I think that signing Locatelli would be a step in the right direction in terms of, you know, we need a midfielder. We could use a couple more Italians. I I know I'm one of those guys. Keep that tradition going. And he's young. Old school. It's good that those are all good things. And he's a, and he's a decent player. He had a great season this year. So it's time. I, I think, uh, you know, we had Jake, Jake uh, Vinciguera on, I don't know when it was, November, December. He said the exact Love same Jake. thing. Love uh, Jake. And then. Even uh, though he's a fan. Yeah. Love Jake. <laughs> and then, and then uh, uh, about Quadrado, about Quadrado, you got our friend Daniel Lucci also, also can't stand him. Uh, I mean, I, I like him. Nick loves I, him. I like Nick him. Nick loves him. Makes <laughs> nice assist. And we don't, we don't have that on Juve. But, uh. <laughs> No, sorry, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I wanted to ask you about uh, Paratici. Do you, you know? I, I mean, it, it kind of felt like it was it was gonna, it was coming for a while. Yeah. I, I'm guessing you're not shocked about it. Do you think? Do you think this is the right move by the club? Hundred percent. Yep. Um, I going back to even what Johnny was saying before. Uh, yeah, he got he got Ronaldo. He did get. So he got a lot of good signings. Okay, I can't say that he didn't. He he's had some good ones, but he's also had some absolute stinkers. And a lot of those were the free transfers with the enormous salaries to boot. Like let's let's just throw out Ramsey. I love I love yeah. the guy. I love the guy's heart. Like I really do. He seems like a really good like he's a good guy, but the man can't stay fit for more than two games a season. So that, and he was what? He's making $8 million after tax, something like that. And just like, no. Those were the deals that really, I think, killed us in the long run. And that was Paratici's kind of M.O. He, like I said, he didn't know how to build a team. So was it the right decision for Juve to let him go? Absolutely. I think that we needed, we need that kind of change. I think that um, there have been a couple of rumors in who's going to replace Paratici. And I've heard, um, what's his name, Cherubini, who has been in the organization before, if I'm not mistaken. And I've also heard Luis Campos from Lille, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think that he was at Lille. Yeah. Um, did a phenomenal job. He's the guy who also brought us you know, Kylian Mbappe, stuff like that. So he knows what he's doing. Um, Both, I think, would be suitable replacements for Paratici. But to just basically answer your question, yes, it was definitely time to move away from the Paratici buying plan. I would agree. Just looking from the outside in, I think it was like uh, almost written in the stars, Joe, like uh, this, this had to end, like, yeah. Paratici, especially near the end, uh, you you almost saw it like from a mile away. 
and especially after this season, how it unfolded and how everything, you know, panned out. I think it was, I, I don't know how, I, I mean, I, I'm not on Juventini Twitter. I don't know how all Juventini took this, took this news, but at the same time, just looking as an outsider, I don't think it was something that's totally shocking. You know what I mean? Um, I think, I think it was the right move as well. I, I, again, I don't know replacements. You mentioned fantastic uh, names. I'm not an expert, so I wouldn't know. But, um, you know, if they move on to people like that, I, I think it's positive for Juventus. Uh, but I just all I know is I think it was time for Paratici to, to leave. Um, you know, we talked about Paratici leaving. We talked about, you know, what's uh, Ronaldo's um, uh, future like? Is it with Juventus? Is it not? Um, our, our boy, Mas Richo, big fan of the show, f- uh, former guest. He's a Roma fan. But he, uh, he's always in the questions. He's always asking us questions, and uh, we love him for that. Uh, obviously, Joe, today's news, fucking shit, uh, fucking dumpster fire. I don't know, man. Yeah, you guys like, picked, you what guys the... picked me, of all people, <laughs> for this, this show. Well, for, well, well, Joe, Joe let, me, let me say this. First off, we're glad we had you on. Uh, I didn't know if we were going to have you on this week, maybe in a future episode. We tried to have you, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. Things didn't work out, so we're glad we got it, we got it done today. Uh, did we know this was going to ensue <laughs> today? Oh, no. Conte <laughs> gone, Paratici gone, Napoli, who knows who's their coach. Oh. And now we go to Milan with uh, the shock news, obviously, uh, with Donnarumma. Um, you know, at first I wanted to stay optimistic for this show, uh, uh, for Donnarumma staying. Uh, that quickly changed after we got the news today of, uh, of Donnarumma and Milan, you know, parting ways. He's going to leave apparently on, on a free, according to Maldini. Uh, you know, Di, Di Marzo, Fabrizio Romano all reported it as well. Um, so our boy Mas Richo says uh, a little joke, I guess. I don't know. I personally don't think it's going to happen. But he says, now Donnarumma to Juve. And how is Adriano um, uh, feeling about Donnarumma uh, leaving? Uh, before Joe, I, I want to hear. Before I hear your thoughts, Joe, I just want to say, uh, for the whole Donnarumma saga, I think um, it's it, it stings uh, as a Milanista. Uh, I have his jersey, uh, the gold one from I think the 2016 season, uh, where he kissed the badge. I got that signed when I went down to Boston for the ICC. Uh, you know, so uh, he comes from the same town as as uh, as Marzio Franco, uh, Castellamari di Sabbia, uh, in in in, uh, in Napoli. So um, it, it it hurts a bit, and you know, just to see that he was, uh, you know, he loved uh, court apparently loved Milan, uh, his you know his uh, boyhood club, um, you know, just all what he's done for us uh, at Milan, fantastic. Um, you know, I would love to see him in Champions League with this side. Uh, but I just think for Donnarumma, as much as I love him, the one downfall is is that he's very uh, mentally weak. And I think he's let people, outsiders, you know, okay, fine. You know, not yourself, maybe your family members, your agent, you know, friends. I don't know who, but uh, other people really make decisions uh, uh, for him. We saw a, we saw a quote that he said to Maldini that uh, I do as I, I I think it was something along the lines like I do what Raiola tells me to do. Like you have to be a bit more of a man and really choose what you want to do going forward. So uh, um, it, it stings. I think is right. Uh, put their foot down on Raiola and and this Gijo saga. Uh, it's not something that. Uh, we haven't seen before. We saw it in 2017. Um, now, what happens to Gijo? Many people want to say Gijo to Juve. Uh, is that something realistic for you, Joe? Uh, we mentioned all kinds of problems with you know financial for many clubs, especially after you know COVID and everything. Um, you guys need a keeper. You have Chesney. You have Buffon. You have Lord Pinzolio. I don't know. Uh, is, 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 is Donnarumma is Donnarumma something for you? So, I've I have always been an admirer of Donnarumma. I have I have shit talked him in the past because, as you as you may know, my co-host Ruzinho, he is a, an enormous Boy. Milanista. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's also a pile of garbage, but that's beside the point. <laughs> no, um, no, 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 no. We love the way. Uh, well, at least I do. 
<laughs> he um he we wa- we watch games together constantly and it always seems to be the games that I watch with him. Like it's not even Milan Juve. It's just it could be Milan Kievo, for example. And every time I'm sitting there with him, Donnarumma has a howler or something like that. It's rare, but it has happened. Of course. Um, and it's always when I'm there. So I don't know if I don't know if I'm the jinx or if Rui's the jinx. Who knows? <laughs> um, but um, I have been an admirer of Don Ruma. Like, let, let's get real. The kid has immense talent. He's, what, 22, going on 23? Um, I just turned 22 in February. It, it, see? There you go. And he's already made over 200 appearances for this club. 251. It, it's yeah. Milan. Like, Milan's – this is no joke. Like, the kid is immensely talented. Um, if I'm reading everything in the reports correctly, he – I, I'll put he in air quotes. He wanted a what ten million dollar salary, which would be they were, yeah. would be they were saying ten to tw- ten. They were saying ten to twelve. They they right. offered eight things. They he said know, no. They he said no, or they didn't agree. They thought it would be more because they made it into Champions League. Maldini stayed firm, and here we are today. So let's. Let's um let's get this out of out of the way too. So let's keep in mind that you have to take that salary and double it because that is essentially how much the club has to pay in taxes in order to give him that salary. Yep. So it's a it, it's a significant it's a chunk of change here. Um, yeah, is he worth it? I think so. You're you're going to be getting this is a keeper who you will have for a very long time. And he's damn good. He has all the qualities. He has great um, diving ability. He ha- he's pretty good with the ball at his feet. He has gotten significantly better with the ball at his feet over the last two like seasons that. from what I've seen. Yeah. Um, is it something that Juve want or need technically? I like Chesney. I, I do. Uh, he has his moments too. This past season – has really put doubt in my mind about Chesney. Um, because that's also because Buffon has been so good every single time he has been that start. But since Buffon is leaving, now we'll just be left with Chesney and Lord Pinzoglio. Um, <laughs> Carletto. It's a very difficult position to be. It, I mean, difficult in the sense that Chesney is still relatively young. He's not a bad keeper by any stretch of the imagination. I think that a lot of teams would be happy to have a player like him or a goalkeeper like him. But if you're given the opportunity to sign someone like Gigi Donnarumma on a, on a free, we'll call it, we'll call it a free just because you're not, you're not paying a transfer free. A transfer fee, but you have to give him a ten million dollar salary. I say take it, especially if Ronaldo's leaving. You have you have to build that that spine up from the back. So Donnarumma and Delict. You need a that's midfield. A, that's a what, good... do, what goalkeeper? You need a midfield. Well, what, 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 do, what do you mean? What do you, you mean? Donnarumma, Donnarumma can't Donnarumma play midfield. He can't do both. Oh, Look at all no, the come on, guys. The midfield's going to come, okay? The midfield will get... Oh, right. we've been saying that since 2014, guys. Come <laughs> on. And, Joe, this is all love. This is all friendly banter, but uh, you guys need a midfield, man. Come on. We knew, we One do, thing I want to add... Oh, no, you go, Johnny. Sorry. No, 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 no. You finish up since you were finishing up your point, and then I'll add to to, to it. If, you, if you're putting me in a the corner there, Adriano, then yes. If those are the priorities, it certainly for me goes midfield. Then it would be if you can sign Gigi or not. He's going to want it's This is also, this is also, I feel like a heavy hand from, from you know Rayola, love him or hate him. Boom, 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 boom. This is this is uh this Spot is him. doing his job. He's doing his job. He, exactly that. He and, and the, guys, guys, just to say like Rayola. We like to call him, you know, Pizzaiola. We like to call Basham. We like to say whatever, you know. But at the end of the day, he's paid to make his uh, clients the most money, right? And unfortunately, guys, Joe, you're a bit older than us. Me and, the, me and Nicholas, Johnny as well. 
uh, letter de la bandiera is over, right? Yeah. We love to think that, you know, I can imagine, you know, Del Piero, idol for you, you know, Maldini in that era, right? Roberto Baggio, just yep. uh, to watch everybody know, the, you know, go on Netflix, go and watch the fucking film. Fantastic. <laughs> I haven't watched it, but I hear it's great. Um, you know, it, it's all about money, right? So Rayo is doing that, right? These tactics, if you want to call it tactics, for his clients to make and to make the most money at the end of the day, right? They, they want to get paid, right? So the money game, uh, we've seen that. I don't want to go down the Super League path again, but we've seen it, right? Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's a tough call. But, uh, Johnny, I don't know what else you wanted to add. Well, okay, so since Joe is a Bruins fan, I'll throw in this little fun trivia, a little thing. Um, so the Mino Raiola Donnarumma situation reminds me so much of the Alan Eagleson Bob Yor scenario. Now, in case our listeners don't know, or in case you guys don't know, so Bob Yor was the type of guy where he just cared about playing hockey. Everybody knew this. Bob Yor loved the sport. He just played the sport. He had an agent called Alan Eagleson. Alan Eagleson was very big at the time in the seventies for hockey as a player, as a as an agent for players. He used to get the best contracts and stuff. But pretty much the first player big, agent. But, yeah. But he was also extremely corrupt, stole a lot of money from players, stole a lot of money from insurance companies, stole a lot of money from, from owners and stuff to pocket it for himself. Extremely controversial. He, he, he was very big on doing that whole Canada Cup thing, the Super Series and whatnot between Russia. People obviously love that series, but the man screwed over Bobby Orr. The Bruins, when they want, at the time, obviously there was no such thing as salary cap. It was just if you have the money, you offer it to the player. The Bruins offered 18% ownership of the team to Bobby Orr to keep him. Bobby Orr was the type of guy where he didn't care. He he never involved himself with contract negotiation. He never did. He said it in his book. He's like, my focus was to play hockey. I let Alan Eagleson take care of the money. I'll just take the paycheck, cash it. That's all. But for me, I'm playing hockey. The reason why he didn't mention to Bobby Orr about the ownership plan is that because the Blackhawks kind of were like, Hey, you know what? If you give us Bobby Orr, we'll give you a little bit extra type of thing. So obviously, you know, he's going to be like, yeah, you know what? Obviously, I'm going to take a cut. And with the whole Mino Raiola where he's like, I want a $30 million uh, part of getting the player signed for your club or whatever. Or like with Halan now, even with Halan, he wants the same thing. Like he wants that big lucrative uh, amount if he gets sold. Like it's ridiculous. And that's why it reminds me of Alan Eagleson because Bobby Orr, when he found out afterwards, also Bobby Orr was there. (laughs) Look at that nice, beautiful photo. Bobby Orr was put into the hole tremendously because of Alan Eagleson and stuff. And Bobby Orr never cashed a check from the Blackhawks because obviously it was knee injuries. He never really earned it. But Bobby Orr was cheated. Like he was close with Alan Eagleson. And because of that, you know, had a bad rupture because of he basically like was put into a big financial hole because of Eagleson. And I feel like as if Mino Raiola is similar to that with Donnarumma. Donnarumma, a young prodigy, a young superstar, you know, like obviously even all these other young players, you know. They, they, they were like, you know what, you take care of the negotiations, you know, we want, you know, we obviously want our value, players obviously want to get what they're worth, and I'm not saying Donnarumma or let's say Haaland are not worth this amount, these amounts, or these, these I get it, but what I'm saying is that Raiola, especially for the enormous amounts that he wants for himself, like, it's, it, it's, it's ringing a lot of alarms in my head, and I don't think this is great for the sport at all, because it's, No, I think I wouldn't oh, no. oh. that amount just to negotiate a contract. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. uh, today, I, I I learned for the first time that in, he wasn't senior's agent, and Insigne left him aside to negotiate his contract with Napoli. Because in yeah, my head, that just shows that Insigne cared more about playing for Napoli than getting the most amount of money in his pocket. He's he's still gonna get a, 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 these players are still gonna earn crazy amounts no matter what. But like at the end of the day, that shows that he cared more about getting things done with Napoli than actually leaving. And I think even Ibrahimovic had him as a as a manager, he has him, as, yeah. a, as an agent. He has, he Still, has, he has him. Yeah, he has him but, now. but, I think but Rome, other players do too. You know, I think Pogba, if I'm not mistaken, still has him. Uh, Roman Joey, I know Bonaventura got rid of him. Insigne got rid of him, like Johnny mentioned. And now it seems like you know there's certain teams that just they don't even want to deal with Raiola, right? Like it's it's one of those things. But I, I, all I, all I know, guys, it's not about the name on the back, but it's about the one on the front and. I commend the, you know, me, the one thing, I, I mean, it stings, Joe. For me, it stings. But I'm glad that Milan took the stand that he did. Maldini took the stand that he did. It's not like they didn't offer him more money. 
this is what it this is what it yeah. is. Eight million. Okay, maybe it went up to nine. Whatever whatever the details were. And I don't know. Like there 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 was the falling out from there. So it's tough. I don't know if he wanted to. They wanted to wait a bit longer. I, I don't know. Like I don't know how much more you're gonna wait in a month. Uh, you know, you're 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 gone, right? So mm-hmm. um, it's it's unfortunate. But uh, I, I don't know, guys. I think we should get back on track here. Uh, back what we were talking about. Um, <laughs> I don't know, Nick, or whatever you want to, to mention next. Because yeah. this, uh, this, I'm gonna. I, we could talk for ten days. We I could. Mean, yeah. oh, we uh, could talk about this. You know what I mean, Joe? Here, we're gonna but... start pulling. You mentioned you have no hair. I still have some, so I'm gonna pull mine yeah. out. So yeah. I don't, <laughs> don't know. You know, like, don't, I, don't I, flex I, too I hard, Adriano. So. You see, you, oh, got, no, you got myself. You got Johnny. You got Joe. Come on, don't flex too hard over here. Oh, oh no, no, no flexing, no flexing. It's still there, but you know, it's uh, soon. It's going to be gone. But uh, if we talk about this anymore, <laughs> it might be quicker than uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, but but Joe, part of uh, all the the mess that was today in the city, all the the news, the, the rumors, this and that. Um, Allegri returned to Juve. It started it started boiling again. It, you know, at first it was on simmer. Sure did. It was on simmer. The, the you know in the past week, I didn't. I really didn't think much of it. And then, you know, today was like a lot. Um, you know, there, there's rumors he could go to Inter, he could go to Real Madrid. Zidane uh, let go from Real Madrid today. Um, so, you know, is, is he going to go back there? Uh, is Allegri going to go there? It's apparently Juve wants him back, basically to avoid him going to Madrid or Inter. Um, I said it. You know, me and Adriano, we did a live uh, Instagram live on on Sunday after after um, you know Juve qualified for the Champions League. I said Pirlo basically earned his spot for for next season with everything. You know, you win the Coppa Italia, you win Super Coppa, you qualify for Champions League. All things considered, for a rookie coach, you know, you don't fire him and go for a fourth coach in four seasons. But if it's Allegri, I'll accept it. If it's Allegri, uh, here we if go. it's Allegri, I'll accept it. Only Allegri, though. Only Allegri. But what do you make of this whole saga? Uh, the, oh, my God. The carousel just keeps turning around and around. <laughs> it's, uh, this is like... Welcome to the city. This is like... Who who could say that this is not an interesting league? This is Thank the you. most interesting <laughs> league you. on the planet. Especially today. Um, would I take... So I'm guessing the question is, would I take another season with Pirlo or if Allegri came back, would I be happy with that? Or option C, anybody else? Um, I, I, you know what? I really do go back and forth on that one, Nick. That's a, that's a tough one for me just because I don't know what this whole season I really don't know what to make of of Andre Pirlo and his tactics. I think that, like I said earlier in the show, we saw glimpses of exactly what he wanted. And sometimes exactly what he wanted was total shit, and it didn't work. That being said, I do agree. I think that he has earned his spot um, for next season. He did get those results that he needed to get. But if Allegri were to come back, yeah, that's a king kicker for me. That I so I've been posting on Twitter forever about announce Zidane, announce Zidane, and stuff like that. Just because I, I mean, I like Zidane. I think it would be interesting to see him back at Juve as a coach. Do I exactly think that he is? Um, <laughs> do I think that he is? All that, no. But it would be certainly cool to see him in the Juve dugout. But I would pick Allegri. I really would pick Allegri. You know what you're going to get with Allegri. We would, <laughs> we certainly would be making Dybala more of the focus, I think, going forward if we were to sign Allegri. And I think that that's huge because Dybala is... Technically, I mean, he's what? He's going to be 27, is 27. He's not young anymore. He needs to be the focus going forward for however long we have him. He's an important player for us. He's always made, he's been a difference maker when he's been on the field. And I think that if we sign Allegri, that is a lot of that has to do with 
the ball. There's so many strings attached, but it's crazy. But that's technically what I would do and what I would ha- be happy with seeing. Nothing against Pirlo. Absolutely nothing against Pirlo. I think that he, he did his job this season. But I think that he really does need to get out of a seat that's at a club like Juve and go to a club that's more like Sassuolo. You know? Like, go yeah. go somewhere with a little bit less expectation. Refine your craft. Especially since they need a coach, since Deserbi left to go to Shakhtar. I think that that would be a really good home for him, you know? Um, especially with the young crop of players that they always seem to have. So that would be that would be my take. I would love to see Allegri back at Juve, as annoying as that is for everybody else on, on Calcio Twitter. So Interesting. Moving away from domestic, and let's go to international. Obviously, well, there's a friendly coming up against San Marino's. Whoop de doo! But I mean, like, <laughs> but, like the Euros, Joe. The Euros. Fine. I'm so uh, finally, finally, after getting gypped last summer, we're finally getting the. This is going to be a great summer. This is a yeah. jam-packed summer. Yeah, and it's. I mean, if yeah. this week. Is anything to judge by for the rest of the summer? We're in for one crazy ride, so this is going to be awesome. Do you, well, so what, we have just a couple of questions that I have here. So one, what what are your thoughts on the national team? And two, more specific, your your boys, both you guys, Bernadeschi, do you think he can make <laughs> a significant impact for the national team, or is he just oh. going to be a filler role for the team? And but Joe, Joe, and Joe, before you go. Uh, Another Juventus legend uh, on, on Twitter, Giuseppe from uh, what, the Just Juve and uh, Juventus Worldwide with Marco Messina. Yeah. Uh, Giuseppe, if you're fucking listening, man, first off, much love. Second <laughs> off, he was listening, and I'm pretty sure he got a little bit upset when I said Bernadeschi doesn't belong there. And he's like, watch, guys, <laughs> Bernadeschi is going to be a focal point. He posted it on Twitter. I retweeted it. Giuseppe, I hope. But I don't know about Bernadeschi. And um, I hope he can. And I hope for the good for the Azzurri. But uh, I, 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 listen, I, just, I, I would love to be proven wrong. And I, and I hope it happens. So, Giuseppe, just a bit of a shout out for you. And and I'm sorry to interrupt, Joe, but uh, I just no? opened Twitter right now. First tweet I see, Dom DeFazio uh, tweeted a screenshot of Bernadeschi's face in his picture with uh, Donnarumma. What a beautiful <laughs> man. Look at that. <laughs> That is, Eminem wishes he looked like that. That beautiful buzz cut, oh. blonde hair. Beautiful man. Make some shady, baby. Go ahead, oh Joe. Oh, my God. Um, so, John, you so first Joe, question. What, 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 <laughs> what do I think of the Azzurri? I bleed that team. I love that team. I love where we're going. We have one of the youngest squads in Europe going into the Euros. I think that we're a significant dark horse. I will say that. I think that a lot of people are are counting against us, I think. Um, yeah. Underestimating, I think, is a good is is the word I was looking for. Um, we have a lot of really good talent in this squad. If we pick who I think we're going to pick going forward, like we have... We have a good. We have. We've always had a good defense, a set or a somewhat good defense. Goalkeepers were set, like whatever. We have Gigi Donnarumma. We have Alex Bennett. We're 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 pretty set. Uh, go looking at the defense, we're pretty set too. We have a couple of vets. We have a couple of new guys. Our midfield has to be one of the best in Europe. I if you've looked best. at, if you've it's looked at guy, these yeah. games, if you've watched the games. That midfield bosses people. It really does. Barella, Locatelli. Who who else am I am I am I missing? Berat, Jorginho. 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 Those guys, phenomenal. Great. We're set in midfield. This is where it gets a little bit touchy, and I've mentioned this a million times before to whoever listens. Really, attack is always seems to be our weakest point, even though we have decent strikers who put up numbers in the league 
and I'm talking about you, Chiro Imogula. That's that's you. Can't seem to score for the national team, and it drives me friggin' crazy. Um, that our wingers are good. We're good. It's the striking. It's the link up between the wingers and the striker and the midfield. That whole that whole mess. I'll call it. We just can't seem to get our strikers to actually score and contribute. We can get everyone else to, but we just can't get them to work, like the strikers to work. No matter if it's Immobile or Bellotti or whoever else you want to, you want to, you could put in Skamaka for all I care, and it, it probably would come out to the same result. Um, and your second question, Johnny Bernadeschi, do I think that he's going to show up? He has. To if be he plays. In the past. If he plays, he has shown up in the past and he's he's been good he's played better for them than he has ever for us so I think that the possibility remains there that yeah I think that he could he could be an important contributor to the team I don't see why not I think that all of those guys really believe that they can go deep into this tournament so I think that that team mentality whoever you're talking about we we could be talking about Ben and I think that that will be the driving force um, come the summer for the Euros. Uh, so obviously, you know, we have, um, you know, well, we, we, we obviously all want Italy to win the Euros. We all, yeah. we all think, <laughs> we all think they could win. Uh, you know, we never want to bet against Italy. Uh, but last week I did, um, those like mock, you know, tournament, the tournament predictor, uh, and you kind of see who's on, uh, you know, Italy's side. Um, Obviously, you know, once you get to the quarterfinals, semifinals, no matter what, you're all, you're always going to be playing a tough team. There's no there's no easy side, you know, maybe in 2016. Yeah, in 2016, there was an easy side and there was a hard side. And that's why Portugal was able to, to win. We don't know don't what's going to happen. You say, don't let Rui hear you say no. that. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't know what's... We, Rui, Rui, Rui cover your ears. <laughs> yeah. Cover your ears. <laughs> we, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, it all depends on third place finishes this and that. But looking at it, uh, Italy might have to play teams like Netherlands, France, uh, Belgium uh, before getting to the final. Uh, what do you think are the realistic expectations for this team? I've thought about that a lot. It's hard. It's hard to say. Still, it's hard. Right. It's hard. It's hard to say. I go semis, personal. That is exactly yeah. what I was going to yeah. say. Semis is a realistic expectation for this team. I think that they seriously can do it. They yeah. have they have what? the built blocks to do it, and they yeah. have. A good so there's no reason not to. Yeah, historically, and, and, but, we suck but, in Euros. But, you know, like we only have one win when it yeah. was like four teams. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? But, but you know Joel, what? oh sorry, go on. So, sorry, Adrian. With these tournaments, no, no, go, go, go. At, at the end of the day, it's so hard to predict because it's a one game. Yeah, exactly. you know, exactly. Even if you look yeah, exactly. in 2016. Italy, Germany. Everybody would have taken Germany in that game, and it goes down to a shootout. And you know, a couple of penalty shots go the other way, and Italy would have been through to the semifinals. So it's you know, a team has a I bad agree. day, and and you're done. Come come the knockout uh, stage. So it's so these tournament. That's why these tournaments are so fun because they're so unpredictable. It's and it's and it's and it's a short time period, guys. Right? Like it, it's a month. Like we've been so. Uh, ecstatic. We've been so pumped, Joe. We spoke. We said. Uh, we said. Uh, uh, we didn't even say Azuri, and you were off your seat, right? And, <laughs> and we said Euro. You know, off your seat, right? So, Joe. You know, and it's and you break it down. You know, you said. You know, you, you thought about this. We said semis. I think is uh, maybe more of a realistic uh, thing. I think they can make it to the finals as well. But I think semis. If we want to break it down, you know, round by round. I personally think they need to get out first. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I think they should get out first, right? Like, they should. It's almost, they a, it's almost a no-brainer. Don't take any of these teams lightly, but Italy should be beating these teams and getting out of their group first. Uh, I think they can make it past the quarters. And semis is where I kind of, you know, come off my high horse, Azuri high horse, and kind of come back to ground and say, listen, this team is great. We, we love them. Um, they're they're nowhere near perfect, but it's a reasonable, I think, achievement if this team can come and make it to the semis. And if they bow out in the semis, 
I will be upset when that if that day comes. But I think we can also hang our heads up high and say, listen, this is a team that came uh, from a fucking dark place. Yeah. And Joe, we don't we don't mention the coach before. We we don't like to mention his name. But and we haven't made a we haven't seen this team in a in a tournament. No, we don't want to say his name, Joe. We we don't say his name. <laughs> but we haven't seen this team in a tournament in five damn years and it's and it's been a long, long time. So, I think that that's going to be the driving. I think that that's part of the driving force. I'm sorry to to steal your thunder no, no, no. there, Daniel, but no, you no, uh, no. you made that is that's kind of what I was waiting for. I think that the bitter taste of missing out on the World Cup is is going to be alive and well. I think that this team's hungry. I really do. I think a lot of these young players want to make an international impact, and I think and that just, this will be the tournament they do it in. And just to add to that quickly, quickly, I mean, like, look at the historically, like in 82, when they won the World Cup, they came after that scandal. And Rossi was the t- tournament MVP yeah. top scorer and stuff. And he was the Rest one of the peace. biggest ac- accused players and stuff. And then 06 came right after catch off fully, you know, and the players wanted to show that's not them. It was management that caused problems and they won the World Cup. So yeah. uh, Joe brings up a very valid point with that. And, so and what it, you're saying, Johnny, is we need a good scandal in order to play <laughs> We well. need Juve to keep on doing what Juve does. No, <laughs> well, the, scan- the scandal is 2017. Involved. 82 was Milan involved. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm just busting. I'm just busting. If you think if you think back in 2006, there was a lot. There was a lot. You know, they, they uh, you know, 98 World Cup, a bit of a disappointment. 2000 uh, Euros, uh, losing the final. 2002. Nobody wants Cheated. to talk about scandal. 2002, Rob. another scandal. Cheated. 2004, can't Absolute even get Rob. out of the group stage. You know, it's it was just up. a culmination of bad shit that, that went wrong with that group, and they win a World Cup. Um, you know, obviously, thank thankfully, we, have, we haven't had as as much as bad stuff. Um, you know, okay, obviously, <laughs> not qualifying for a World Cup is bad, but what happened to that group in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, they had some bad yeah, luck. Bad. Um, yeah. but, but yeah, Johnny, you, you said it on the podcast before when they have their backups, uh, up against the wall is when they perform best. So two weeks from Friday, you know, I, we're so excited. Um, I know you're excited, Joe, I hope, uh, between Canada and the U S all, all the Italian Americans, Italian Canadians, we will we have to we'll definitely be together. watching it. You know what I'm, you know what I'm excited for is, uh, you know, 2016, I wasn't part of the culture community on Twitter or social media like I am now is, is seeing everybody come together. You know, everybody, we, we, we bash each other during the season yeah. and then, and then now we're all going to come together and support it. Italy. It's a very I'm fully true expecting to, for people to like, you know, like Insigne, for example, is going to be a very important player for Italy in this tournament, you know, and I'm fully expecting that if Italy, for some, some reason or not, knock on wood, let's say don't happen to do as much as we want them to do, that people are going to fully shit on him and stuff. And I'm, I'm just prepping myself mentally for that fight. But like, but like, uh, but I, no, I, we have to come together. I, I, I want, I can't wait to see that unity though. We have to come. And, and it's been there guys. Like it's it, like, and I'm glad, uh, you know, I, I think we have to tip our hats off to, to Mancini. I, I've said it time and time again. I sound like a broken record. I'm glad they got to him to sign until 2026 to keep, this project uh, group or whatever together, you know, I, I think it's, it, it is important. And this goes to show that even if guys, even if this tournament doesn't go the way we might want it to go, I think it will. I don't want to say spoiled, but we have to wait. What? Not too much longer. We have the world cup in 2022, right? So this yeah. is, these are two tournaments to, to really show the world what this Azuri uh, side is, is about. And uh, I, I'm, I listen, guys. I'm optimistic. I'm positive. Like you guys have been saying, the unity, not only with the club but from friends, you know, across the world. I, I, I think it should be a time for celebration. We've had a shit year, right? Uh, if we want to talk, uh, you know, pandemic-wise, you know, things are kind of, you know, the light is coming at the end of the tunnel with this pandemic. And uh, this, I mean, I mean, I don't know where you guys are listening or, or watching from, but. Uh, you know, st- continue to stay safe, continue to stay strong and be positive because, you know, we, we are going to get out of this. And uh, I think a tournament like this is, is one of those things that kind of continues to bring us together, right? So uh, if you're in Montreal, be safe. The terraces are opening. 
go 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 celebrate go go cheer on the azzurri um but yeah joe um is there like one guy that you're really looking forward to uh before we uh, before we let you go like who's your one guy that is is going to be maybe the maybe the difference maker or the um hidden gem maybe going into this tournament i'm going to say it enrico chiesa no, 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 Federico, no, Federico no, I said his dad, whatever, I had his dad in my mind, no, seriously though, don't, don't discount Chiesa, okay, but 100%. I think the real, I'm on your side, we have the I options, think the I'm real, the real gem, the real gem is going to be Barella, I think that he's going to be the real fulcrum of this team, because that kid is a baller, let's just, let's get that out there, guy is an absolute baller. So I think that he's gonna be he's gonna be the one. No, that's well said. And I'm gonna throw in just a, a little one. I, I'm I'm gonna say Insignia like Johnny, but I think Keen. I I, I want to see what Keen's all about. I've said it mm-hmm. many times on our podcast. Uh, I think you, you Joe, you mentioned you know you're a little bit worried about when it comes to the attack. I kept I keep on saying it. We keep on saying it. We have the options, and I think if they can come out with the the right formula. Those options are going to shine, and I think Keen can be play all over the front line, left wing, right wing, striker, super sub. So, guys, I think it's only positive, uh, positive things when we talk about the Azzurri going forward. So, again, uh, Joe, I think this is going to have to do it. Uh, we spoke a lot. There was a lot to talk about. I'm sorry, but this episode <laughs> had to drag on a little bit longer than usual. Uh, today was a crazy day. Be here for hours. Oh, there's I not much it. more to say. Yeah. We could be here for a lot longer. But, Joe, from the three of us, we're glad that we got to make this happen tonight. We're so happy to have you on the second part of the RCR podcast. We had way, way back. We're happy to have you on tonight. Uh, where can we find you? Where can we find all the great work that you guys do with your podcast? Uh, any plugs? Uh, it's your time to shine. Um, so you can follow me at at Joe underscore Cappuccino underscore on Twitter, and you can follow Rui and I on the RCR podcast at RCR underscore podcast on Twitter. You will find us there, and you can just give us a listen. But make sure that you follow all of the awesome dudes on this show too. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, not, I'm not even I'm not trying to just like toot your horn or inflate your egos <laughs> you guys do a fantastic job and i've been following you guys for a while now like maybe at least two years yeah, appreciate since, that. that's awesome thank our, you so much since we started our podcast and seeing how much you guys have done and the community that you guys have created it gives us an example to try and go off of so we really appreciate having both of us on really not so much because he's a pile of shit <laughs> but definitely i appreciate all the work that you guys do so thank keep you. it up and i hope I, I hope i get to be on again thank you that, that 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 definitely means a lot that definitely means a lot we really appreciate that uh yeah seriously I mean, thanks I, man. i'm sure i could speak for the, the three of us we, we just we just started this for fun and we didn't even think about like you know helping out people i don't know we just we just do it and we enjoy it and we, we <laughs> yeah, connect with people it. it's just do fun it like. it's, it's fun Joe, it's the connections we we made. Like we sound like broken records, but if anybody tuned in to the hundredth episode, which we know, keep some people, you know, people did. We we used to hit our hundredth episode, and uh, it comes down to the connections we made. You know, we, we talked about a year ago, a couple of years ago. Joe, we wouldn't be here talking to you like we've known you all our life, right? Like, yeah, it's the thing it's these small things that a keeps us going, and b just wants us to come on Wednesday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night going alive, you know, post content, create content. It's for things like this. And honestly, Joe, the, those words mean a lot to us. Uh, we share all the love back to you guys, uh, you and Rui on RCR podcast and uh, everybody else that we've made connections with. Uh, you know, if it's podcasting, if it's just posting on, on Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> social media, Italian culture, whatever it is. It's all love on our end, and uh, it means a lot to us that you came on tonight and uh, to share those beautiful words. Uh, so definitely, now I'm humbled. Now you have to, you have, to, guys, you have to go follow Joel. You have to go follow Rui. You have to follow RCR Podcast. Give them a listen. But where you can find us, like we say every week, at The Cultural Guys, on Instagram, Twitter, 
uh, Facebook, YouTube, um, uh, where you can find our podcast on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Give it a share, subscribe, like, and uh, we'll be back next week to talk a lot more cultural in lead up to the Euros Italy this summer at the Euros. We can't wait. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Ciao. Bye. The Calcio Guys is a weekly podcast by Adriano Donardo, Gianni Delacoli, and myself, Nicholas DiGiovanni. We want to bring Calcio back to its roots in our communities and share stories from around the world about why we're passionate about the beautiful game. You can listen to us anywhere where you listen to your podcasts, including Spreaker, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Mixcloud. Give us your opinion on social media at The Calcio Guys on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The outro song is The Last Ones by Jazar. Thank you.